Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome to tonight's cabinet in the community. Uh, before we get started, I would like to introduce the signer for tonight. His name is Mr. Tony Barraza. Won't you please give, put your hands together and give Mr. Barraza a hand. As we begin tonight, we have three forms of government joining us in the room tonight. We have the legislative branch being represented, we have the executive branch, and we have the most important part of government, and that is you, the community. Tonight, you have an opportunity, an exciting opportunity, to be join, joining Mayor Rawlings Blake as she leads an official cabinet meeting here in the community. As many of you know, tonight we are at Maritime Industries Academy, and you should put your hands together and give the staff and faculty here a hand for hosting us. Tonight we have an opportunity to hear from the mayor and members of her cabinet, as well as Councilman Brandon Scott, as they discuss the issues, initiatives, and projects that, that are underway, those that have been completed be within the last 12 months and those that are currently running and future projects that are down the road. There are a few rules or agenda items I would like to highlight. This is a two-part agenda. The first part is Mayor Rawlings Blake, where she actually convenes her cabinet meeting, which is normally held at City Hall in her executive conference room. But tonight, she's brought the cabinet into a neighborhood, and she's hosting an official cabinet meeting here tonight. And so, as it would be at City Hall, we're asking that we all respect the process, for this is truly government in work, government in progress. Councilman Scott will give opening remarks, and then he will hand the microphone over to Madam Mayor, who will then begin the meeting. Now, some of you may say, well, I have a question for Department of Transportation, or I have a concern for Department of Finance, or I have an issue with Department of Public Works. Each of you should have received a map and a program listing members of the cabinet. On the back, there's a map listing the rooms that each agency will be represented. Agency heads will facilitate breakout sessions listed here on the back of the program. Again, there may be those of you who may say, well, I would like to speak with the mayor directly. Well, Madam Mayor, after the cabinet meeting, we'll be visiting each of the breakout sessions. There you will have an opportunity to offer your question, concern, or comp compliment. So tonight, again, I welcome you to the official cabinet in the community in District 2. District 2, give yourselves a round of applause. And before I hand it off to Councilman Scott, I just would like to again thank those of you who participated in last week's Teletown Hall. There were over 4,000 calls made last Monday night. At one time, over 1,000 callers remained on the line and asked questions of the mayor directly. Over 50% who remained on the phone on Monday night requested a reminder call from Madam Mayor over the weekend. How many of you were on that call? Raise your hand. Welcome and thank you for following through and joining us tonight. And so, it is my honor and privilege to introduce, well certainly not introduce, but present to you your councilman, Councilman Brandon Scott. Uh, thank you, Mr. Augustus. 
If you all don't know, Gus used to be my boss, so that's awkward every time he has to do that. <laughs> I would like to just welcome everybody out to the second district cabin in the community. Uh, thank the mayor and her team for choosing us as the second cabin in the community. And as we know, the second district is second to none, so you guys can stop. You won't have a better one after this one. <laughs> but I also would just like to thank all the citizens that came out, all the community leaders and residents of District 2. Please raise your hand and let's give them a round of applause. And as you guys know, uh, uh, partnerships are very key, so I would like to recognize my senator, Senator Nathaniel McFadden, sir, please stand. And my neighbor and delegate, Delegate Cheryl Glenn. And everybody knows that transparency in government is very important to me, and it's also very important to the mayor. So this is something very unique uh, that I think everybody has the opportunity to understand and hear uh, what we hear all the time and see government at, at its best, but also working and understand what's going on in your neighborhood. Because a lot of times, you guys don't get to see that. So this is an opportunity for that and later on to get questions. But it would not be an event with the mayor and I if I did not take a joke at her, so I have to do that right now. No, you don't. I do. <laughs> The mayor tried to keep up with me today, y'all, but she couldn't do it. And she had to revert. She fell off the wagon to coffee. She's supposed to have one cup of coffee. That's number three by my count today. <laughs> and with that, I'll turn it over to the mayor so that we can get started. Thank you very much, Councilman. I want to uh, thank Gus uh, for uh, being our uh, MC for the evening. I want to thank Senator McFadden uh, for being here. I want to thank Delegate Glenn. I really want to thank, uh, oh, there you are. I want to thank Councilman Scott. We have had a wonderful time today uh, in the district. We've had, uh, we've done homework club. Uh, we visited with some neighbors. Uh, we, what else did we do? We did an opening for the 7-Eleven. We, we read, to, um, read to some students at Moravia Park. We've just had a good day all around uh, in the district. Yes, and we surprised some young people at Hazelwood with Ms. Cruz's class. Her, Ms. Cruz brought her students out to clean the alley with us. And um, where were we, in Frankfurt? We were in Frankfurt, and those kids really worked. They were not just hanging out just for some pictures. They really worked and cleaned the alley, and I'm so grateful. So we, we uh, had a chance to surprise some of the students, and they were stunned when the councilman and I uh, came in. And before I forget, I want to thank Principal Manning for uh, allowing us to use the facilities here at Maritime Industries Academy. And I want to, to uh, thank each and every one of you uh, from uh, the community who are here with us this evening. Um, as the councilman said, transparency in our government has been one of my top priorities. And uh, this is a way for you to get a glimpse of uh, what we do in the, the cabinet meeting. Um, normally in the cabinet meetings, we would talk about all you know, citywide issues. Uh, but in our efforts to shine a light on uh, what we're doing district by district, we are moving through the city and hosting the cabinet in the community. So I'm going to hear from, um, let me tell you which departments, DPW, uh, Department of Transportation, Housing, and then our police department. We're going to hear uh, a report on specific um, items to District 2. And uh, after, after that, we'll, go, we'll do our closing and we'll go to the breakout sessions because I am sure uh, that you'll have questions. Again, to, the, to uh, my constituents that participated in the Teletown Hall, thank you so much. That was my first time doing it. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to doing uh, more of those. And to all of my agency heads and my senior staff and all of uh, every, everyone from my administration is here, including I want to thank the school system. Uh, Keith Scroggins is here from Baltimore City Public Schools. I just want to you know, thank everyone for giving us the opportunity to, as I said before, shine a light on the, the way we do uh, business in city government. So to start our report, um, with the first report on District 2, I would uh, like to hear from Director Fox. Colonel Fox, and you need the mic, sir. All right. Good evening, Madam Mayor. As you know, DPW works alongside uh, a host of... Testing what? Can you hear me? 
Uh, as, uh, good evening, Madam Mayor. As you know, DPW worked alongside a host of uh, city agencies uh, this, uh, this past Saturday in Clean Up Baltimore. And, and I am uh, uh, happy to report that we did a fantastic job in the uh, second district with you working, and we got a lot of photos about that, uh, doing some work around the neighborhood. And working in partnership with many neighborhoods in the second district, we were able to uh, get uh, quite a bit of work done in the community. And today, uh, I want to address a couple of uh, some issues like alley cleaning and rat abatement. Uh, DPW spent a considerable amount of time today cleaning alleys that are known hotspots for illegal dumping uh, in, all, in neighborhoods such as Frankfurt, Bel Air, Addison, and Parkside. In the uh, 6600 and 6700 blocks, uh, these are known dumping lo locations were cleaned today. Uh, 18 properties overall were boarded and five clean in the Bel Air Edison uh, neighborhood. Uh, these sec uh, sections are not only an eyesore to the community, but also create an environment which is uh, ideal for rats. And that is why, uh, in addition to cleaning these sections today, we also proactively inspected and treated for rats. We visited 880 properties and baited 135 properties. Uh, last year alone, we conducted about 3,200 uh, rat eradication efforts, uh, with 2,000 being proactive and 1,016 in response to citizens' complaint. And as you know, DPW is com committed to cleaning up uh, the city and uh, also taking care of the rat uh, problem that we have within the city. Uh, mechanical sweeping, we did some uh, 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 mechanical sweeping with our street sweepers along uh, some of the areas uh, uh, to include the major quarters. We uh, did mechanical sweeping in the, uh, uh, along the, uh, uh, the uh, major gateways like uh, Bel Air and other major gateways within the city. And one thing I wanted to highlight, Madam Mayor, is that you know that we're working on expanding street sweeping uh, throughout the city. Uh, right now we do about 30 percent and we're going to expand that to 90 percent of all the streets in the city of Baltimore. Uh, in trash collecting last year, DPW collected approximately 35,000 tons of mixed refuge uh, in uh, last year. That equals to about uh, 2,533 school buses of trash. Uh, the majority of the second, uh, and in recycling, the majority of the second district uh, does a pretty good job at recycling. And we are putting out campaigns to increase our recycling throughout all of the neighborhoods. Uh, but I would just want to highlight one thing. In the second district, they, uh, they average around 40 to 49 percent of the uh, residents recycling, which is very high for the city. So my hat's off to the second district, and uh, we need to do more. In the uh, water and wastewater, we, of course, you know we're dealing with tough state and federal regulations, and uh, we manage the amount of rainwater that we get each year, but also to ensure that water entering our storm drains is clean when it reaches our waterway. Therefore, we've done an extensive effort today to clean out all of the storm drains. We did storm drains along the major gateways also. Uh, Bel Air uh, Road, Hartford Road, Sinclair Lane, Irvington Avenue, and Sedonia and Powell Avenue. Uh, we also did the 4700 block of Hamilton. So that was a lot of effort put in uh, today to make sure our storm drains are working, working properly. Uh, uh, today we also made a permanent cement repair to the 46, uh, to 4604 Eastern Avenue. Uh, and that should be uh, uh, setting up now. It was a cement repair. Uh, in 2002, DPW entered into an agreement with the federal government to address sewer systems deficiency. And DPW planned next year in the second district to invest around $19 million uh, in the second district as far as repairing the sewer lines. Uh, in closing, uh, Madam Mayor, the plight of aging infrastructure not only affects Baltimore City, but it is a shared concern among other historic cities in our country. Uh, plans to address these issues moving forward, and we're making progress in upgrading the city infrastructure uh, to safeguard our, the integrity of our system, but both in solid waste and in water and wastewater. 
uh, we develop a new uh, uh, division called the Asset Management Division where we are setting up a proactive way to address and identify water mains that are about to break, sewer lines that are about to break, and aggressively try to repair those before they do break. So uh, we're doing a lot of things in, the, in this area, and I want to thank the councilman for, for working with us on a day-to-day -day basis to get these issues taken care of. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Director Fox. We might come back to, for some questions before we go to the breakout sessions. I just want to make sure everyone gets a chance to give their presentations, because we're trying to you know, pack a lot in a little bit of time and then do the breakout. So I'm going to go to direct, uh, Department of Transportation. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Uh, Department of Transportation is pleased to report over the past four years in District 2, over 3,300 potholes have been filled, 1,536 abandoned vehicle SRs have been serviced, 4,164 parking complaints have been addressed, 228 traffic studies were performed, 588 LED lights were converted within this district. We have uh, 38 blocks of in-house uh, street resurface and milling and paving done in this district over the past four years, as well as 434 street repairs and 6,220 street light service requests. Uh, this year, uh, we got ongoing activities including extension of bike lanes, the markings on Frankfurt Avenue, Moravia Park Drive, and Walther Avenue speed humps installed on Alta Avenue, uh, 37 intersections of crosswalks being renewed, and uh, this year alone milling and paving of 15 locations which are completed. Uh, Course Avenue and Frankfurt Avenue reconfiguration is 65% completion in design and is ex expected for schedule for construction summer of 2014. I'm also happy to uh, announce that we have exciting projects on Blair Road going on. A $3 million Complete Streets Capital Project under design, Urban Avenue to the city line. Uh, planning and design of street, sidewalk, bike improvements, and green and at key nodes on Blair Road include Urban Avenue, Frankfurt Avenue, and Fleetwood Avenue. Also, we have, uh, or we are installing countdown pedestrian signals and push buttons at Blair Road and Frankfurt Avenue, Blair Road and Hamilton Avenue, Blair Road and White Avenue, Blair Road and Moravia Road, Blair Road and Woodley Avenue, Blair Road and Parkmont Avenue, and Blair Road and Glenmore Avenue. Uh, today, or this week, we've had crews uh, doing pothole repairs in the community, as well as alley and footway repairs. Uh, we had crews out there installing signs at 14 locations and uh, street markings at 6800 Brook Avenue and Armstead Way at Plasky Highway. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. We definitely are going to have a question uh, for you, but we're going to keep moving to try to get to all uh, four agencies. I'm going to go to Commissioner Graziano for housing. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor. Uh, is this on? Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, and uh, Councilman Scott. I'm pleased to report uh, our activities and progress in the second district. Um, I would just say uh, from a, an overarching perspective, uh, uh, the second district um, is um, uh, characterized by uh, stable and uh, uh, well-maintained uh, neighborhoods. And so we don't have as many of the challenges with vacant housing and so forth. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. but. Um, uh, there are, for instance, 145 vacant building notices in the entire district, which is uh, obviously relatively a low number, um, and uh, so a lot of our activity uh, it goes in other directions. But I'll talk more about each of those areas. Um, one of the areas where we do a lot of work and have done a lot and will continue, will expand upon, is in the uh, division of green, healthy, and sustainable homes. Uh, under uh, Deputy Commissioner Strong, and uh, he has um, uh, uh, pointed out that the Division of Green, Healthy, and Sustainable Homes, uh, the acronym is DOG HASH. So uh, <laughs> he's, he's flinging a lot of dog hash out here. Uh, we have 
actually 368 households over the past two years uh, who have uh, benefited from uh, his dog hash program, uh, and including 197 households that have received weatherization. Uh, 130 families have received home ownership uh, uh, assistance, incentives, and uh, Madam Mayor, pursuant to your goal to grow the city, um, I'm pleased to say that 25% of those are new homeowners, uh, new to the city. Uh, and so that's in furtherance of that goal. Uh, 41 um, uh, households, predominantly senior households, have received uh, various uh, uh, rehab assistance, uh, things like going in and repairing uh, boilers and roofs and uh, putting in grab bars and that sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's very much um, uh, a program that's getting at the population that's here. A lot of seniors are getting assistance. Uh, I would also point out, Madam Mayor, that uh, and, and thanks to your leadership, uh, we have a uh, nearly a $53 million uh, grant from the, for three years of funding, the Public Service Commission, uh, the Housing Department working with uh, three other agencies will be dramatically expanding on those efforts for uh, weatherization and various energy assistance and conservation measures uh, throughout, uh, throughout the, four, uh, the second district and throughout the city. Um, the uh, Land Resources Division uh, with uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner Julie Day, who's here as well, um, is um, actually uh, not all that active in this district because of the lack of vacancies. We really actually have three vacant lots and one vacant house that we own in the district. So again, it's a district that's characterized by uh, not a lot of city-owned uh, property, vacant property. Uh, in terms of um, uh, some other areas, um, the, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, uh, we, we're always available in this district uh, for emergency response, and Deputy Commissioner Scriber is here. Uh, we're 24-7 coverage there, fires, floods, uh, uh, stormy weather, whatever, you name it, they're out there. Also, the summer meals program is very active in the district as well. Um, let me just... Uh, uh, wrap up with the uh, code enforcement. As I mentioned, there are only 145 vacant building notices in the entire district. Uh, but we, I would say that we're well underway in terms of, uh, uh, of, a, of Im implementing the streamlined code enforcement program in the district. And I did want to acknowledge that be because of the tools that the city council has given us, the $900 citations and the $250 citations, we're able to streamline code enforcement and instead of running to court with every case, we can issue these citations, uh, which are kind of like a, a parking ticket. Uh, we have 56% um, of the district is actually in the, in the, in the code, uh, streamlined code enforcement at this time. Um, and so um, uh, that's uh, very, very helpful. Uh, we have issued 51 $900 citations uh, we've issued 43 of the $250 citations. Now, again, those are for properties that are not vacant. Uh, and we have 28 uh, properties in receivership that were long-term vacant, some of those vacant buildings that I mentioned. Uh, uh, in, in terms of outcomes, uh, 49 of these vacant properties have been renovated uh, and uh, in the streamlined code enforcement areas, and another 16 and other parts of the district. So a total of 65, even though it was a very small number to start with, we've already seen 65 of those properties renovated through your vacants to value program. So we're very, very pleased to see that. Uh, we've also, finally I'll say, been working with Councilman Scott uh, on co increased code enforcement on the commercial corridors. And I know that's a very important issue for those who live in the district and those who shop here or work here. Uh, we also work very closely with BDC and, and the Main Street's uh, folks. Uh, so we're dealing with the residential code enforcement, but also the commercial. So I'll leave it with, with that for now, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. We have a, a new list of uh, homes for, for you and, and, Ms. and Mr. Booker already, and um, some, some vacant properties that one of the neighbors um, 
pointed out to us, and I want to thank you for working so closely with the councilman on the, particularly on the commercial corridors, because as we are trying to increase investment in the city and the commercial corridors to to bring the type of amenities that you know these residents deserve to have in their in their community, um, we have to uh, make sure that the commercial corridors are worthy of that investment. So with pe when investors are looking, they're seeing an, an area that the uh, the other commercial tenants are maintaining um, you know excellent standards so I appreciate you working so closely with the councilman on that did you want to say anything to the commissioner before we move no, on we all right so we're going to go to uh, Commissioner Batts and then we're going to uh, see if anybody has anything to add before we go to the breakouts Commissioner Batts thank you madam mayor for the, the opportunity to present uh, before you today <clears throat> as I have present here Colonel Daryl D'Souza is in the back Lieutenant Colonel Mel Russell and Major Worley that uh, oversees our, our district here in Northeast. I applaud you, Madam Mayor. Most members may not know that you were out a couple weeks ago with myself and the councilman to the wee, out, to the wee hours of the night, so we were patrolling the area, and so thank you for being out there. Uh, currently, Madam Mayor, we're down overall violent crime by for the city by 6%. We're down 2% in property crime, and overall part one reduction of 3%. What that means is just short of a thousand fewer crime victims in the city of Baltimore as of October 26, 2013. Violent crime in Northeastern District is up uh, slightly 6%. In the last 28 days, however, I'm very happy to see that violent crime is trending downward. In the past 28 days, violent crime is down 9%. Property crime is down 10%. And overall, part one crime, which is a cumulative of all those categories overall in crime is down 10%. You may have seen the helicopter in our area a lot more than what you've seen in the past. You may see it with the spotlight on. What we're trying to do is make sure that people are not in alleyways, not on corners, and not uh, being threatening. We're using technology that's called forward-looking infrared. That's called FLIR to us. That they give body signatures that are in alleyways. If you have anybody hiding in alleyways, we're bringing them up and we're lighting them up to make sure that uh, we're safe and people are not just hanging around. Uh, overall, for Council District 2, we have seen a 41% increase in gun arrest uh, for, the, for the, the district, which is very good for us. Uh, recently, you may have seen in the paper that uh, we have a cutting edge process called sequential lineups. Uh, we have uh, received national accolades for bringing this online, which takes bias out of uh, uh, identifying suspects and crimes. We're one of the first agencies and one of the largest agencies in the United States to do that. Also, Madam Mayor, we have an 80 point plan that we're bringing online to address and reform the use of force by police officers. Uh, also uh, bringing on board a retired executive from the Department of Justice to help us and oversee us and uh, share that with us. We have opened up uh, good communications with the ACLU recently, NAACP. We set up uh, good, robust working relationships as uh, recently as last week. Dealing with the communities of Northeast, Northeastern Frankfurt community, we've seen robberies uh, have reduced 7%. Burglaries have reduced 26%. Stolen autos are down 29%. For uh, Bel Air Edison community, we've seen violent crime is, it has reduced 22%. We've uh, made uh, 233 arrests for drugs. Uh, we have 14 arrests recently for handgun violations on the streets. And property crime is uh, going up a wee bit in our area, which deals with shoplifting and petty thefts uh, and, and uh, other small uh, low-key larcenies. For, for the 4x4 four four community, unfortunately, we've had a double homicide there in recent times. Uh, however, by, in the 4x4 four four community overall, we have a violent crime. Violent crime is down 5% in that area. Property crime is down 57%. And overall, part one, which is cumulative again of all those crimes, is down 43%. With that, Madam Mayor, I uh, submit my report and stand ready for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Before I go to uh, Councilman Scott, who has a few questions, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that happened today. I want to thank uh, 311. I got a great compliment from one of the neighbors who said that he uh, uses 311 all the time and he's received excellent service. And uh, I want to just pass that along. Uh, you know that one of the things that I've been working on through uh, 311 is yes, we want to be more efficient. We want to do things better and faster than we've done before, but if we're not um, meeting the needs or the expectations of our citizens, it's really not enough. So we've put into place the our feedback forms, uh, whether it's email or telephone or in, in writing from citizens to get 
uh, feedback on the, the quality of service that is rendered once uh, our citizens call 311. So I wanted to pass that along. It might not make the survey reports, but I did want to pass that on. I wanted to thank uh, Karen Sitnik and the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. One of the, the uh, highlights of the visit um, to the 7-Eleven, besides my three sips of Slurpee before the councilman stole it, um, was the, the partnership. Uh, the uh, management at, at uh, the 7-Eleven talked about the partnership uh, with our Employee Baltimore uh, program where we worked with the 7-Eleven, uh, we provided specialized training, and we pre-screened their employees so they were able to hire uh, local uh, local uh, Baltimore residents and I want to thank you uh, for that partnership and I also while our um, uh, while the fire department is here I want to remind everyone um, that uh, if you need a smoke detector um, you you just need to dial uh, call 311 and uh, we have a very good rate of um, you know we're not as fast as Domino's but we're getting there with being able to get out there and, and get you uh, the number of smoke detectors that you need uh, for your home at no charge. And these are the smoke detectors that come with the 10-year lithium batteries. And I, I say that because, you know, every time it's, uh, you know, we have daylight savings time and you know, you, you, it's time to turn the clocks back. Everyone is reminded to Sunday. this Sunday, uh, reminded to change the batteries. And that always causes me to groan, uh, at least it, it, before we had the 10-year the battery smoke detectors. But, you know, this is 10 years. So you don't have to worry about twice a year, you know, getting a ladder or a chair or, you know, making your husband get a ladder or a chair. Uh, so he'll be happy. What? It's true. <laughs> so if you need a smoke detector um, or if you just want to make sure that what you have is sufficient for your home, please call. Uh, that is uh, what the, the firefighters are, are here for, and, and I hope that you'll take advantage of that. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the councilman for a few questions. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> now, uh, really quickly, I'll go back up to Mr. Fox. You're off the hook today, sir. Uh, let's start with DOT. Just uh, two quick questions really quickly. Uh, the first, just in reference to uh, the Bella Road streetscape, uh, just a thought that I had in my head to make sure that we're working with uh, – the parking authority, is, as far as if we're going to be tearing up some of the curves to make sure that we go back and put in the new parking meters to match the new streets and the new streetscaping that we're going to have to make sure that's happening. But also, uh, I know, Mr. Hooper, you know very well, and we talked about it all summer long. Can you talk a little bit about how we worked this summer with the concrete streets that are in neighborhoods versus out in the, in, in, on main roads and what we're doing to kind of address that issue? Um. DOT actually has two separate units. You have the internal units that do neighborhood streets, but that's asphalt, milling, and paving. And then if it's a concrete slab street, we have put that out on contract. We don't have the, the wherewithal to do so. So uh, over the past few years, they've actually increased, or we've actually increased our, our allocation to concrete slab streets. Mm -hmm. Graziano, uh, just for the for the general good of the public, could you talk about the financial impact for the, the investments into those homes for the seniors and those who have taken advantage of those programs? Yes, the, uh, the, the total value uh, of the uh, investment in the 368 households that I just I mentioned before is close to $2 million, $1,870,000. Um, and again, we expect that number to go up uh, significantly as we move forward with the uh, $52.8 million three-year public service commission funded pro efforts. Uh, we also have other funds from the state of Maryland. So we, we have programs, for instance, to convert um, uh, uh, oil furnaces to, uh, to gas which can save uh, uh, approximately $979 per year per household. So that's a tremendous, it's not, not only cleaner heat, but it's far more economical. So that's a real, real immediate in, uh, impact on the households. Uh, it's more comfortable, it's cleaner, and it's a lot more economical. And a, and a collateral benefit to that is, by the way, as we reduce energy costs, we find that more households are uh, th their risk of foreclosure is reduced because they have 
it actually lowers their housing costs. They can make sure they've got the money to make that mortgage payment. Um, and so uh, it's, there's a ripple effect there. Thank you, sir. And Commissioner Betts. <laughs> Uh, just really quickly, uh, of course I know because I know the great work that Major Worley and uh, Colonel D'Souza had those gentlemen doing each and women doing every day. Colonel D'Souza? Yeah, that, that guy. Oh, okay. He, he knows a little bit about Northeast Baltimore, I okay. think. <laughs> uh, can you talk about just in some general stuff of what the Major and the Captain and the Colonel have those folks doing to work on some of the issues that are unique to, to district, to the things. It's not like everywhere else in the city. You're not going to typically drive up on a group of drug dealers. You're not going to typically drive up on crimes happening. Talk about the stuff that they're doing, the initiatives that they have that have helped them be able to lower the crime the way they have. Absolutely. Just in a very oversimplified way and very short, uh, we've been working very hard to bring down complaints dealing with response time. We know that has been an issue within the, the, the district. We're working very hard to make that happen. We're focusing on robberies, especially at this time of the year. Uh, our robberies start to go up in Northeast going into the holidays, and so we're focusing very heavily in our deployment on that. Uh, many times where we see uh, the robberies occurring are, are where the schools let out and the kids are on the school. Um, at the same bus stops. I think we have, I think uh, uh, Major Worley was telling me, we have eight schools that dump into one bus stop and uh, the kids have friction there. So we've uh, planted off officers out there every single day we, with the school district, along with our police officers. We have them out there to make sure that the kids get home safely. We have six additional officers on the street uh, during peak robbery times uh, throughout uh, the entire fourth quarter. Uh, we're patrolling the business corridors in response to commercial robberies. We're working very closely uh, with Morgan State, we have uh, uh, some of our police employees and their police employees working in partnership is working very well for us. We're holding meetings with business owners in the district to give advice on best practices to prevent robberies overall. That's just a thumbnail sketch of some of the things we're doing. All right, thank you very much, Commissioner. Before we go to the breakout sessions, I wanted to just say, are there any general announcements from any of the, the cabinet members? Yes, Dr. Barbeau. Madam Mayor, I just want to let you know that um, during today's breakout sessions, we have individuals from our Office on Aging and Care Services here to help uh, residents with Medicare open enrollment. So we can do that for them back in the rooms. Thank you. Director Burkine, do you want to talk about Halloween at all? <laughs> have you picked your costume out yet? <laughs> Okay, there you go. I should get louder. <laughs> no, I just want to remind people that Halloween is, in fact, on Thursday, and that we want to have fun, but we actually want to be very safe. We've partnered with the police department to make sure that we can take care of this, and yes, I have my costume. Do you want to give us any? any I'm, I'm, I need to know what yours is. Uh, <laughs> I'm still working on mine. <laughs> All right. All right. Anybody else? I'm going to turn it back over to Gus for instructions for the breakout sessions. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Scott. Before we actually go into specific instructions, uh, Madam Mayor, we have a presentation for you to make to the principal. Uh, just, yes, she is. Principal Manning is in the rear, and we just would like to make a brief presentation. Why don't you put your hands together? And Again, thank you very much for opening up your school to us. As you can see, this is something that uh, means a lot to the residents in the second district. So on behalf of the councilman and myself, I want to thank you very much and present this to you. Thank you. Thank you. And in, in addition to Principal Manning and her staff, we had a number of community leaders who helped us canvass the neighborhoods. We went out with members a few Saturdays ago with Councilman Scott on a rainy Saturday, and I see those two uh, community people, if you just raise your hand. Uh, Mike Hilliard and the Harbell people have done a great job. Those members of Harbell give yourselves a hand. Miss Jackson and Frankfurt Estates, give yourselves a hand, that's right. And by the way, that's Mr. Warren and Ms. Carr who joined us that rainy uh, Saturday morning. And Commissioner Batts 
Officer Banks joined us that day, and we walked for two hours uh, and had a great time spreading the word about cabinet in the community. How many folks in the room have with you the map of the breakout sessions? Who does, a better question, who does not have one? <laughs> we will make sure you have one. Mr. Warren, Councilman Scott, uh, a few other hands I see that are up. We have members of Monks, that's the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood and Constituent Services. If you would just raise your hand and keep your hands raised, folks, and we will make sure that you would get a copy of this map. You may have a question or concern. You may have an issue that needs to be addressed. Even if you have a service request that you would like to follow up on, we have members of MOET, that's the Mayor's Office of Information Technology, slash 311. Those folks are out to the out front. There's a table, they have a commute, computer, they are live. You can research an SR request. You can actually create a service request right here on the spot. That's live right here at Maritime Industries. Those of you who may have a question or concern for housing, Department of Public Works, Department of Transportation, they are listed on the map here. We have liaisons who will assist and direct you and serve, if you will, as ushers to those rooms. In those rooms, you will have a sign-up sheet and you have an agency head. Everyone in the room is waiting to assist you and we will not leave without everyone in the room who has a question or concern to raise being addressed. And so, we will now conclude the cabinet meeting, the official first part of the agenda, and that is the cabinet meeting. You ought to give yourselves a hand for coming out tonight. Thank you. And so we're just asking that in an orderly fashion, you, we would make our way to the breakout sessions. Madam Mayor will join agency heads, excuse me, agency heads as she makes her way around. These things pop, pop up all over the place. And what it does, it trashes the day. How's it going? Hello, hello, hello. How's everything? Don't stop. You're, you're working. Hi, good to see you. It's fantastic. I believe in peace. I think that peace and um, is the best way and to embrace each other in the community. Um, and with that said, I wanted to invite you all to church. I know you have to work on Sundays and I was wondering if the commissioner allows you all to join us for service. Do your thing. And this new program that we're talking about, we're able to provide because the mayor testified that the public service commission championed their cause.